Good morning. Good morning. You're all very, very welcome. Good to see you all. And yes, that was a Bible I was carrying in. I'm going to read from the Bible today. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Also, I wanted to prove to you that we've got one. <laughs> An important thing. Um, I remember one time I said here, because the Bible used to be on the back of the eagle here, and I said that, and I said this, I said, oh, the Bible gets in the way. What I meant was, when you put your reading and on it, it slid off, but Monica took it literally, and she moved the Bible up there, and she said, well, the Bible gets in Chris's way. I didn't mean it in, you know, in uh, any other sense. There's, there's good stuff in it, believe me, I've read it. Right, where are we? Yes, let us prepare ourselves for art of worship, meditation, prayer, and song. Spirit of life and love, without and within us, may we be aware of your presence in our lives. May our troubled world be blessed. And may we do what our hearts and minds tell us is right. May our daily needs be met. May our shortcomings be forgiven. Give us the strength to resist wrongdoing and the inspiration and guidance to do right. May we show compassion for all living things. Amen. And now may we sing together our first hymn, hymn number two, Lord of All Being Throned Afar. <laughs>
I have here a book of poetry from the Poetry Ireland Review and its theme is, every poem in it is on the nature of Jesus and they range from the very orthodox to the very alternative and they're all good. You could put your finger at random into this book and just pick a poem that might reflect the views of somebody in this church because we are such a diverse community. But I've picked one of the less orthodox ones to read. It's by Wendy Cope and it's called A Poem About Jesus. When I find myself feeling sorry for the wrong people, disgraced MPs, vilified bankers, the victims of paedophile witch hunts, I remember that Jesus was the friend of sinners and he would have felt sorry for them too. I love him for that. And I love him for being on the side of the wusses, telling us the meek will inherit the earth. I don't know if he was the son of God. I don't know if he rose from the grave. If he is fiction, the genius who created him deserves all the love and praise we can give. For the second reading, <laughs> I have selected from Genesis, or have I? I hope I have, yeah. Yeah, from Genesis 11. And the reason is, it's to do with language. I'm going to be speaking a little bit later on about language. At that time, all mankind spoke a single language. As the population grew and spread eastward, a plain was discovered in the land of Babylon and was soon thickly populated. The people who lived there began to talk about building a great city with a temple tower reaching to the skies, a 
proud eternal monument to themselves. This will weld us together, they said, and keep us from scattering all over the world. So they made great piles of hard burned brick and collected bitumen to use as mortar. But when God came down to see the city and the tower mankind was making, he said, look, if they are able to accomplish all this, when they have just begun to exploit their linguistic and political unity. Just think of what they will do later. Nothing will be unobtainable for them. Come, let us go down and give them different languages so that they won't understand each other's words. So in that way, God scattered them all over the earth, and that ended the building of the city. This is why the city was called Babel, meaning confusion, because it was there that Jehovah confused them by giving them many languages, thus widely scattering them across the face of the earth. Let us pray. Spirit of life and spirit of love, all of us have friends. All of us are friends. May we understand the huge importance of these connections in our lives. May we appreciate our friends, their kindness, their loyalty, their ongoing, unchallenging, and unchanging love for us. Spirit of love, may we be such friends, not falling away when the going gets rough, but always there for each other steadfast in our love, ready to celebrate each other's joys, ready to empathize with each other's sadness. Amen. And now let us into, enter into a moment of silence or meditation and in that moment, think of the friends in our own lives. And now may we stand in body or in spirit as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may we sing together our second hymn, hymn number 87, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Oh wait, that's wrong, is it? Hold on, don't sing that. Uh, yeah, I have it, 319, When I Needed a Neighbor, Were You There? biblical story that I read earlier on about the Tower of Babel. Well, in the story, a united human race migrates to Shinar, which is lower Mesopotamia, which I think is today is Iraq, is modern Iraq. And all speaking a single language. 
And then, as the story said, they built a great city with a tower that would reach the sky. And this upset God, or Yahweh, as the Jewish people knew or called God. And Yahweh, observing these efforts and remarking on humanity's power in unity, disintegrates their common speech. And now they can no longer understand each other. And then scatter them around the world with the city unfinished and all speaking different languages. Now there is, or there are suggestions that Babel is the Hebrew for Babylon, meaning the gate of God. Also that the word Babel comes from the Hebrew word Balal, meaning to jumble or to confuse others. It is a story in many ways, poetically telling or explaining the origins of multiplicity of languages that we have in our world today, and to some extent how that was God's design, because God feared his own creation. God had decided that humans had blasphemed him by building the tower and that reaching for the heavens. And the punishment for this was multiple languages so we could no longer understand each other. Mind you, many of us speaking the same language don't understand each other. So God was somewhat of a jealous God or a fearful God of his own creation. Now, of course, there are always contradictions in the Bible because prior to this story in the text, in Genesis 10, 5, tells us that the descendants of Japheth, Gomer, and Yavin dispersed with their own languages long before the Tower of Babel. So that is always the case with the Bible. There are paradoxes and there are contradictions. Now, what God didn't appreciate was the ingenuity of his own creation. And little did he know that they would go on to create the Berlitz Language School, which is helping everybody once again to understand each other. And all the other, I'm, I'm looking out at one of them, language teachers who encourage people to understand each other. Would God be angry with them? All you that sit out there who teach languages each to the other, hoping that the world can understand again. Are you going against God's great plan? Alan? <laughs> now, it's interesting to observe that most young people from these islands, when they emigrate for work, or adventure, they go to the Anglophone countries such as New Zealand, Australia, America, and Canada, and not to the near countries of continental Europe. 10,000 young Irish people emigrated for work to Germany, but 300,000 to Australia alone because they see, in this case, English as their common bond, where they can go and live amongst those who speak the same language. And there is a comfort in sitting amongst people who speak the same language. I was telling at the book club the other night 
When I was very involved in European projects when I was a trade union official, and the whole concept of Leonardo and all the other projects was to bring us together to write major reports for the European Commission. And then the reports were weighed and put on shelves, never to be read or touched again. But the real thinking behind it was to create a new sense of a European. Well, when we sat in the restaurants and at the meetings, it was always the case. The English would look at the Irish and say, fancy a pint. And we'd go to the nearest pub and think, I can't really take all this German and French, can you? No, not really. <laughs> and that is because there was a comfort in speaking the same language. Things were said that we understood, nuanced language. And here, sadly, in Northern Ireland, well, throughout the whole of Ireland, to some extent, language continues to divide. Where, sadly, the Irish language, Gaelic, is considered weaponized by one side. And it saddens me to see a small, modest project, a school caught up in the middle of a row about communities and culture in East Belfast. Now, I hastily add, I'm not sentimental about the Irish language. My experience as a youngster with Irish was not a good one. We were bullied and beaten into speaking Irish in school. I listened to the Joe Duffy show, uh, the live line on RT about two weeks ago. And of course, there's more and more exposes of clerical abuse in the Republic of Ireland in particular. But Joe had a number of people on, one particular man, who was beaten black and blue because he wouldn't answer questions in Irish. Beaten black and blue. And he wept on the radio as he told Joe Duffy the way he was treated by the Christian brothers. He said it brought him up to hate the Irish language and everything associated with it. I don't think that exists in the South anymore, but most certainly it did amongst my generation, and I think Isabella's generation. Even though we could speak some Irish, we dreaded the Irish class and everything associated with it. Do you know, and people don't realize up here, we had an Irish, we had a language freedom movement in the Republic of Ireland. And that was started because Irish was imposed on us all. You couldn't even get a job as a postman, a hum humble postal worker, unless you answered questions in Irish. And then people set up the language freedom movement. John B. Keane, the playwright, Gay Byrne from The Late Late Show, and a friend of mine, Brian Smith, who now lives in Greece. It was used to discriminate against people in the workplace, in particularly jobs for the civil service and the police, known as the Gardaí. I remember when I worked as a postman, I passed the Irish exam, but all the other lads who came from working class families, particularly from Dublin, who had no Irish, all worked as temporary post officers because they couldn't pass a few questions in Irish. I tell you that because I want to give a bit of background to see that many of us are not overly sentimental about the Irish language, though I do think that has changed dramatically in the Republic of Ireland now. 
It's interesting to note that in the story of Babel, again it's contradicted because God revealed himself in three languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Was this to show that God did not just choose one language? So again, you can see the contradictions in biblical texts. God was revealing himself through multiple languages. Had God changed his mind about the Tower of Babel? I would imagine God is capable of changing his mind when he finds out he's wrong. I hope that's the case. Recently, His Holiness Pope Francis said that all religions are paths to God, which would mean that God can be explained in multiple languages and faiths. Because if all religions are pathways to God, existing in all cultures, in multiple languages, then God can be explained in multiple ways, religiously and in language. So, it would appear that God has changed his mind. And even though we belong to different faiths, speak different languages, we can all submit to the same concept of God's love, that we can find common ground. God can reveal himself to people in and through any language and no speech or language is foreign to him. That's in Psalm 19. There is no speech nor no words that cannot be heard by God. No speech nor no words that cannot be heard by God. So even though the story tells us originally that God feared his own creation and feared people speaking the same language and scattered us to speak different languages, God's message of love still brought us all together. And as I said about language teachers and the Berlitz School of Language, they're doing the other bit of helping us to understand each other. Gunyener on Tahar de Taurus means make, make, may you make a good journey through life. And it's interesting that Taurus, Taurus, journey, pilgrimage, is the name of the Irish language project in East Belfast, which was created by many people, but in particular, Linda Irvine. And she has done incredible work in promoting the Irish language amongst people and in a neighborhood where it would be generally accepted that people might be hostile to the Irish language. And now her ambition is to set up a small integrated school. Now our denomination, the non-subscribing Presbyterians, played a major role in establishing integrated education here in Northern Ireland, Lagan College. We were one of the major contributors and churches, well, probably the only church, I think, involved in Lagan College, supported by our friends, the General Assembly of Unitarians in Britain and the Remonstrant Church in the Netherlands, all gave us support on that. We were strong supporters of integrated education and still are. The idea of children, irrespective of their background, being educated together. 
Well, the controversy over the school in East Belfast is disappointing, to say the least, because first and foremost, first and foremost for us, it's an integrated school, bringing children of different backgrounds together. But that's not the issue. The issue is language. The issue over the medium in which the children are taught, Irish, is causing concern. And this is a sad reflection on where we are. I, by the way, am speaking to both sides in the debate, not with a lot of success, but with some success. I'm not naive. Language is not neutral. And as we saw, anybody who went to see the film Kneecap, which I went to see and enjoyed, but it really worried me when repeated over and over again that every Irish word spoken is a bullet from a gun. You can see how that plays out in Northern Ireland. But to blame and to pick on a modest project, which is a school, a school, an integrated school, bringing children from different backgrounds together through the medium of Irish seems so sad and unfair and unwise, in my opinion. And I hope and pray that it can be resolved and that people can be reconciled. I'm eternally optimistic, and even some of the hardliners I've spoken to have shown some leeway or fracture in their points. I wish Skull Nesolta every blessing on its tourist journey. And to all the people involved, I wish Banach de Orov. God bless you all. Amen. So this song, uh, it means a lot to me. Um, I was brought up in church, but it was the wrong church that I was in. But this song still helped me through a lot of crap that went on. So I just left to share it with you. <laughs> Come back. 
Luca, thank you. Um, I don't really have any notices. Um, is Carol? Oh, Julian. You're a substitute for Carol, are you? <laughs> good, 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 mo good morning, everyone remind you of the bu All Souls bus trip on Saturday 9th of November, which will be a celebration of our togetherness and community in an interesting historical context, South Antrim shifting identities and allegiances from 1170 to now, involving many changes in, in la languages. Um, I will take any booking, bookings and any payments after the service. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, Trish, have you? Alan? No? Uh, choir tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Uh, and if anybody's interested in wanting to join the choir or talk about the choir, please approach Trevor. Thank you. And now we'll take our collection. <laughs>
And now may we sing together our final hymn. In the Red Book 469, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go. Four six nine. Oh, okay. Not on this day, oh God alone. Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. <laughs> Where did I get that title? Stay. Oh God. <coughs> hmm? Why don't you sing that one? <laughs> anyway, how are you all? <laughs> We've got some cake afterwards and, yeah, and coffee and tea, and we'll select a hymn pretty soon. We are sorry about the delay. Which one are you going with? Forth in thy name, O Lord, I go. Hmm? Yeah, okay. Well, whatever comes up, sing it. Beloved divine, your wish is our wish. Your dreams and hopes are ours. Nurture our souls. Bless our lives, now and always. Amen. God bless you all. Go in peace.